welcome to Kate's Day. Today is very exciting because I am driving the Pero again and raking the field and spreading all the straw around so that when we go to seed the field, the drills go through the ground very easily. I hope you enjoy the video. I am also have Darcy here, my wonderful instructor. You can start at six. Oh, yeah, sure you got the tractor is driving itself right now on auto steer, so I just have to manually make the corners and then hook it back up to guidance with the button I have right here. It's running full RPM, which is 2,000, and we are in 12th gear, going 8.3 miles an hour, so a lot faster than when I drove combine and even seating. Yeah, seating going about five. Combine is around two miles an hour, seating five miles an hour. Bailing, I got to go super, super fast. I love that. It was like race car driving in the yeah, tractor, yeah. And then now I get to go 8.3 miles an hour with the Harrow. It's a very windy day in Montana, although that's the usual. Breaking the field is very weather dependent, so we have to make sure that it's not too cold out or else the straw doesn't spread and it leaves a bunch of piles, which is not what we're looking for because those piles of straw get stuck in the drill when we go back to seed the field. And the point of harrowing or raking the field is to spread all of the straw out and around so it's not getting stuck when it comes time to seed again. This monitor right here was for seeding for the air tank attached to the drill, so we don't use that. We just use our tractor monitor that has guidance and GPS, so the lines and it paints it new where you've harrowed, and then also a small tractor monitor to show the speed we're going and the RPMs of the motor. Darcy harrows in 13th gear because he's a pro, but I go in 12th just to give myself a little more time to do corners and think about things that are coming up. Do I make my corner going this way? Yeah. Engage guidance. Oh, that was a big yeah. yeah. Kind of watch your spacing here. Then you kind of guess what your distance would be. Then it won't hurt you so much. Yes. And also while turning, I have to really watch these big cables back here so I don't yeah. get them caught on the tractor wheel and completely ruin everything. That would be very bad. They had a guy do that one time. It was one of the guys working for Harms and called my driver. Oh, really? And they put, we had some rainy time. And, they put him on the tractor to harrow and that was we had a tractor with three triples on it. We, we caught it on there and it bent a bunch of the frame up on the rake and actually oh, no. snapped the cable. Oh that's always bad. So we got the snap cable and that shed so but it just ripped it apart. because I did drive this same tractor, our John Deere 9630, when I learned how to seed and also did seeding by myself. Driving the different machines helps with everything. I've now seeded with this tractor, harrowed with this tractor, and disced with this tractor. So I've had a little bit of time in the seed. Not nearly as much as combining though. No. This tractor has 4,842 hours and it's actually our new tractor that we got to the farm even though it's very old and used it's still new to us so you'll have to check out my new tractor to the farm video to learn a little bit more about the tractor we're using today all of the hydraulics for the implement are right here and we don't use any of them while harrowing in the field and you use a lot more of them while seeding because you have to lift your implement up and down to make corners but this is really just for travel with the harrow and then putting it back on the ground. This tractor has a power shift, but it also has a clutch for when you stop and start again, but you don't have to shift every time, which is very nice. And that's right here. So you bump back to shift down and forward to shift up. And then you move this lever back to park. 
It's always a big learning experience on corners. And you get a little bit more proficient at it the more you do it. But then the next year, you already forgot again, so you go have to relearn. Yeah. You start to become really good at it right when you're about to finish that job for the year. And then you have to relearn the next job and the next one after that. Now Darcy is out of the tractor and I'm driving all by myself. So I'm very excited and a little bit nervous. So clutch in RPMs up a little bit. I don't want to start out in too high of a gear. So I'm in six now, that's good. Let the clutch out easy. And then raise my RPMs up a little bit. Now I'm shifting into a higher gear. Now I'll increase my RPMs a little bit. Darcy's going to follow me in the field to make sure everything's going to go okay. I'm not sure. It's always hard to find the pass you were on. Oh, it would be, I missed it. I missed the pass. This pass right here, I think. So I didn't miss it. I ended up finding it. I'm going 12th gear, full RPMs now, and I'm officially driving the tractor by myself. I really love learning all the different operations on the farm. Everything seems to be going well, although it is the first pass, so it's hard to tell. At least I know how to stop the tractor this time. If you've watched my seating video called Runaway Tractor, you'll know that my first pass in the tractor, I couldn't stop. I had full tanks of seed running downhill super fast and a rock in my packer wheel, so I was trying to stop the tractor and that's the one part that I wasn't fully able to do. So I've gotten better in that area. Now I'm just looking behind me and checking the harrow, or you can also call it a rake, to make sure everything is working properly and nothing looks too wrong. You can't always tell if you have an issue, but visually checking everything is very important and critical to having good equipment and keeping it running. Here. 
obstacles in the field that could very much hurt this caro. Always leave lots of distance between you and the big tractor and the obstacle that could be very bad for the big tractor. I always love our beautiful Montana sunsets because they are incredible. As you can see where we farm, there's big wide open fields. Where you see all of the trees is where homesteaders planted the trees and had their homestead. That was a bump. And there is a little bit of a draw in the field here, so I might slow down on my next pass when I go through that. I'm going to make my turn the other way because I don't have enough room to turn this way without basically running off the hill. That would not be good. So I'm going to turn this way and kind of do an odd loop and make my own pattern in the field so that everybody driving by on the road can see. So this might be my last pass. I'm just driving over to my guidance line and now I can put guidance up. Oh no, this isn't my last pass. So I'll just have to keep doing these turns this direction. When you harrow at an angle, the field becomes very wide at one end and not wide at another end. So you just have to make more corners over here. I have the tractor at full RPM now, but because I'm coming up to a decent sized draw or cool in the field, I'm going to bring it back a little bit and then also turn my head back and watch the implement go. And an implement is anything behind your tractor or equipment that you're pulling. That was a little bit of a bump. If it was a hard bump in the tractor, it's definitely going to be a hard bump for the equipment. Now I can bring the RPMs back up. I am kind of looking at the grain bins and gauging when I'm going to have to start my next turn. I will have a little part that I missed up there, but it's more important to miss something than to run into something. bit early but better early than late. I'm now back on guidance and good to go so I didn't hit any grain bins this time. That is always a plus. It feels weird to be in the tractor with it getting dark so early because combining and harvest we go till 9 9 30 and it's not even dark out. I'm coming up to this coolly again. Wasn't quite as big of a bump because I wasn't speeding through it this time. If I continued on this guidance path, I would be dropping off the hill into the neighbor's field, wrecking the tractor. So I'm really watching to the edge of my harrow and the edge of this field for when I have to start my turn. I'm not really slowing down with my RPMs anymore. I feel pretty comfortable driving the tractor and I just make sure I watch this big cable here. It's hard when all the dust is blowing to see where your next pass is going to start, but you do have guidance lines here and that does help. Okay, now I'm on my guidance pass again. That was a little bit confusing. It feels like you're going this way, when in actuality, the guidance pass is headed this direction. That's why I should be looking at my screen and not out at the dust-covered window. Dad and Darcy are now both watching me in the tractor. So I have to watch this side to make sure the hero doesn't hit the grain bins, and then this side to make sure the tractor wheel doesn't hit the cable. Our farm was homesteaded in 1912 by my great-grandfather who immigrated to Montana from Denmark. Some of his farming practices are still used on the farm today because he taught them to my grandfather, who then taught them to my father and uncles, and they're now teaching them to me. So some things you improve on as technology advances, but there are little methods that stick with the family, and that's what differentiates family farms and makes it so interesting to learn about other people's stories. Gorgeous tonight. 
because it is time to end for the day, I'm going to shut the tractor off. Here are the bins I was trying to avoid. This is what the harrow looks like. It is 70 feet long. I'm outside of the tractor right now and I'll take you for a walk around to show you what the harrow looks like and all the straw and twine in it. Here's the straw, some of the twine. These are called tines and they're basically big metal rods that move the straw around. And I am done harrowing for the day. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn more about how your food gets to your table. You can go to the Kate's Egg website, katesag.com and purchase a Kate's Egg tote bag, which is 100% cotton and made in the USA. I take it everywhere with me in all the tractors. Actually, I usually take a couple of them. You can also follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!